It's the first workday evening commute since the viaduct closed and so far so good. This is a live look at Sky King as drivers make their way home tonight. A few backups reported, but it's a far cry from via doom. But we need people to stay plugged in, stay engaged, and keep doing those adjustments that they can, that are possible. If it's whatever we can do to, to reduce those drive alone trips, that's going to really help us all out. So the message tonight from state transportation officials, keep it up. There is concern that people could ditch mass transit since today's commute went so well. So the viaduct closed on Friday night and we are in that early part of a three week period before the State Route 99 tunnel opens. Workers are busy around the clock rerouting ramps and preparing the north and south portals to meet their deadline. King 5's Glenn Farley is live in Seattle with our top story. Glenn. Well, Lori, we're actually in Shoreline at the state's traffic management center and they have access to thousands of cameras and we have accidents along the side of the road in addition to everything else here that everybody has to deal with. But the word is so far so good, but be expecting something different in the days ahead. They watch traffic here at Washdot's huge traffic management center and as the afternoon commute winds down, the word is it was pretty typical for a Monday. Not too bad. In the books is this morning's commute, which wasn't all that bad. Cam Johnson is our traffic reporter. The commute started earlier than usual. Here's a look at already slow going at 610 AM, even slower at 640 AM. And then by 845, when it should be really slow, it was smooth sailing. It was like a 10 minute drive. This Monday morning already had its benefits. Dry weather, still icy in places. Mondays also tend to be lighter, yet it was clear that people had changed up their commute patterns. Most commutes lasting five to 10 minutes longer, some 20. And this is just the first day of many. Bartrice uh, is a WashDOT spokesman. Yes, we've had some success this morning, but we really need to keep that momentum up throughout this closure period. But while you were on the bus, train, water taxi, or in traffic, there has been work going on to hook up the tunnel. That tear out of a section of the northbound on ramp over the weekend, that's done, paving the connection to First Avenue scheduled for Wednesday. They will be doing it eventually in like, front of my coming place. Coming to you. Yeah. Yes. Jane Finch lives next to the viaduct up near Pike Place Market, and it's been much quieter since late Friday night when the viaduct closed for good. It's similar to when they would close the viaduct down for inspection after the earthquake. So, but even more so, it's even more quiet than that. At the south end of the tunnel, piles of geofoam that held up the detour are being pulled out, revealing the south and northbound ramps heading in and out of the tunnel. At the north end, a similar story as the road they built years ago, then buried the one heading into the tunnel is being exposed to daylight for the first time in years. Now Jane Finch will have to get the tear down as it goes through her neighborhood over the summer. A lot of that noise you heard in the background there, that was the concrete from last weekend being loaded up into dump trucks and hauled away. Remember, we're down through one weekday commute. There's 14 more to go. And that's why the pressure is on in this unprecedented length of time, a three week closure for everybody to keep in mind everything they need to do from buses to going in early to staying late to maybe working from home. They'll make it go easy for everyone else. Live in Shoreline, Glenn Farley, King 5 News. All right, thank you, Glenn. Let's go to Jordan Wilkerson for a look at what's happening right now on the roads. Jordan? Yeah, and although it was a little bit better than expected, and we did kind of think last week, too, that maybe the first couple days would be a little bit better because people are finding those alternate routes or maybe leaving a little earlier, a little later, or ch kind of changing their work times. Um, but things are still, you know, just normal traffic, if you will. We're still seeing some of that. Uh, but this purple here indicating that the viaduct is closed. That's what the purple means when you see that on our maps. That means a road is closed. And so all those little arteries you're seeing that are red leaving the viaduct area uh, going far, farther away from the city. You're seeing those speeds around 10 miles per hour or less. We also have a lot of incidents out there to get to. This is actually more uh, of an issue than the actual area around the viaduct. And I think it's because maybe a lot of people are taking raise uh, routes that they're not used to perhaps. Uh, so we have a crash on 15th Avenue at Lander Street, a crash on Swift, Swift Avenue at Albro Place. We also have a crash on 8th Avenue at 45th Street. 
And then if you take a look at the South Sound, you are going to be greeted with fog. It is very dense in some spots in the South Sound, so keep that in mind. That could also be an issue for your early morning commute as well, specifically in the South Sound. But uh, Jordan Steele will have your forecast up in a little bit. And actually, we have uh, some footage. Chris Ingalls is out uh, going northbound on I-5 through Seattle. So let's toss it to him now and see how things are looking over there. Hey Jordan, how are you? I think a lot of people just decided to sit this one out today. We're I-5 zooming northbound, just passed through downtown Seattle, and now here we are approaching the 85th Street exit and just rolling along at the speed limit. It's never like this. This is what you might call Sunday traffic or holiday traffic, you know, nobody going to work. I ride this commute all the time and it's very rare uh, during a weekday that you travel at this kind of speed. So uh, Seattle officials say that people just changed their habits today. They took the water taxi from West Seattle, which had triple the ridership. They took some of the 20 buses that Metro added to their schedule to have more routes available. Um, but S Seattle is stressing that this really is about a regional issue with 250,000 people People a day traveling into Seattle. Even the outer regions are really affected by this viaduct shutdown, as Mayor Jenny Durkin described. If you're watching this at home and you live in Bellevue or Renton or Kent or Everett and you think that's a Seattle problem, it, it's not. It's We're tied together as a region now. Some of the heaviest uh, traffic this morning ended up being on 167. Um, and as people know that that is a very travel heavy road um, and with people trying to get to Seattle earlier, I think the flex time, it made those traffic patterns different than they'd been before. So live as we fly past the North Gateway exit here, just no traffic in our way. And that's what we've seen for the past couple of hours that we've been going north and south on I-5. So the message from uh, SDOT, uh, the message from the city of Seattle, the mayor is whatever you did today, keep on doing that because it's working through what could be via doom and again they do expect that things could get worse a few days later in the week when people think that everything's okay that's when every, everybody will be out on the street so you're warned i'm chris Eagles reporting live along interstate five thank you so much chris let's check in now with jordan Steele. the weather had a lot to do with this very smooth commute we, today we really dodged a bullet because it's been extremely nice here locally here's a look outside right now we've had clear skies now there is a problem of fog. We'll get to that in a moment, but I do want to get your morning commute because it's been a little chilly in the morning. You have to talk like that when it's cold, right? Uh, you've got temperatures in the 30s tomorrow morning. Yet again, there will definitely be spots that drop down into the upper 20s like we had this morning. Frost is likely as well with the clear skies. Um, and look at your temperatures currently. A lot of places right now are falling into the 30s, and we do have to pinpoint those areas to the south of Seattle, to the south of Tacoma. We're talking way south sound where we're beginning to see a lot of that fog develop. So Chehalis at 32. In fact, technically, some areas the fog didn't lift at all today. So when we take a look at your visibility, we're socked in from Tacoma all the way down south, Olympia, Chehalis, quarter mile visibility. Same thing all the way up to parts of the Kitsap Peninsula. And I don't want to forget about you folks to the north. Northwest Interior, Bellingham right now, same story. Also Port Townsend. So as you can see, this is a common factor. This is Olympia. You got to look down here on the bottom of your screen to see what I'm looking at. And um, technically, you should see a clear vision to those street lights, even though it's dark. But the fog is impeding on some of the um, visibility issues down there. So that's my first headline. All right, first thing you need to notice is we're going to tonight and tomorrow. Rain will return. We will be tracking that in your full forecast, and the air quality is a bit of a concern as well. So I'm going to tackle bottom two parts of your headlines when I come back in just a few. All right, thanks, Jordan. If you want to get some more info about the viaduct closure and traffic and how to deal with all of it, go to king5.com slash tunnel effect. We also have discussion happening in our Facebook page dedicated to it, facebook.com slash groups slash Seattle tunnel traffic to take part.